News is happening now. And it's happening here, on your corner. In your neighborhood. So when news breaks here, trust Today in New York to deliver it. Join Darlene Rodriguez and Michael Gar Shout out M Easy and tune in to the sit down. Boy, you should have known by now. Easy does, easy does, easy does. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, this is the sit down. It's your main man, M Easy, the orator. Ain't none greater. And across from me is um, anchor extraordinaire, NBC News, Miss Darlene Rodriguez. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? It's nice to see you again. Absolutely. It's been a while. It's been a little while. A lot of things has transpired since the last time you sat in that chair. <laughs> well, you know, a lot has transpired, right? Yes. We have a lot going on. Look, lot the going world on. is a changing. <laughs> Every day. Amen. Um, to talk about. Darlene is from the Bronx, Puerto Rican. Um, now, t talk to me a little bit about your, your backstory and how you got into uh, reporting the news. Well, it's 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 funny because I grew up in the Bronx, as you said. I've wanted to do this job since I was eight years old. My mother was just a news junkie, watched it, consumed it every day. And um, I just admired the people that I saw, and I wanted to tell stories. Mm -hmm. I was always a talker. So it's what most I'm, Puerto Rican women are. You know, you know how we are. You know, it's not like we keep our opinions from you or anything. No, like that, right? no, 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 no. <laughs> yes, no, we're not one to say, we're not people who stay quiet. So it's just something I wanted to do and I pursued it. But you know, being that Puerto Rican girl from the Bronx, it's it's not like I saw a lot of faces like mine mm -hmm. in the news growing up. So it definitely took a lot of hustle. A lot of determination, a lot of people telling me it's not going to work. You have a New York accent. It's not going to work. You don't have any experience. It's not mm -hmm. going to work. You don't know anybody in this business. And just having to tell yourself over and over again, no, no, it's, it's, it's going to work. I, I was just telling my cousin the same exact story like that when I got into radio. And I, it's a gift and a curse of mine. I don't believe anybody. I think everyone's a liar because everyone told me. You're never going to get on in New York. You don't know anybody. How is it going to happen? You've only got so many followers. And I would like to look into the camera and tell you all. That's right. Look at you appreciate now. Appreciate you. That's right. All right. Anyways, let's Absolutely. get back into this. Let's get back into this. Um, now, like I said, a lot of things have transpired. Um, Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. I, I get the you went way whack, back. whack presidents <laughs> mixed up. Um, so Trump was talking about fake news and how he didn't give that one CNN reporter a yeah. question. Mm -hmm. comments and thoughts about that, Darlene. Talk to me. Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's certainly something that everybody in the media is talking about. And, and, and there is a difference between fake news and news that you may not like or agree with. What is fake news? Well, fake news is, you know, you're on your Facebook page and you see that link that says, oh, your favorite celebrity just had his eighth child. And mm -hmm. it's, it's some nonsense. And you click on it and it's fake and it's to get you to click and, and see ads and that sort of thing. And, and it's just a bold-faced lie. Yeah. Um, but a lot of people are using the term fake news to describe news that they may not agree with, um, <clears throat> that, that may not pertain to them, mm -hmm. uh, that sort of thing. And, and there certainly is a difference. Now, where do, where do fake news stories come from? And I, I know there are links and things, but are there people actually behind these type of things? Or is it like an automated machine that just sends out these fake news clips? I think, I mean, I think there's people behind everything we're seeing right there's there's certainly people behind it it's not something that that's that's my area um it's not something i'm really familiar with but sure i mean it there's there's people who are creating content that isn't true that's certainly not us okay. at nbc <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, certainly not us at news four today uh, today in new york i mean we work really really hard to make sure that the stories we put out are accurate to make sure that Something that we report on, we can look you in the face tomorrow and we stand by what we said and what we reported. Whether or not you like it, mm -hmm. but it, it's got to be the truth. Now, what do you say to somebody that says they don't believe the media anymore? I see, I, I hear that. Um, I've always heard a little bit of that. You know, you have choices. You have to, it's, it's your responsibility as a viewer, as a listener, as a reader, to go out and find the, the people, the media outlets that are reputable, that you can trust. Um, I know at my job, I work with people at Today in New York at WNBC who work so hard to 
double, triple, quadruple check their stories. Mm -hmm. We have an eye team and they investigate stories and they will work tirelessly and it's a whole team of them and they're trying to figure out exactly what happened here, how to make it right, how it affects you at home and I trust them. Mm. And I feel like I stand, I mean, I definitely stand behind our product. I think we all do at WNBC, but you have, you have choices. You have to go out and seek what is true. And it's all of our responsibility. Yes. Uh, I've been on a, a truth search <laughs> lately and it's just, it, it gets bad if you start looking. Trust me when I tell you. Right. I mean, it's the sit down. That's your main man, M. Easy. <laughs> um, Darlene, Ro Darlene Rodriguez is in the building. Um, talk to me about... Um, your thoughts on some of, uh, of Ben Carson being the urban housing leader mm -hmm. for Trump's uh, cabinet? Well, I mean, I think that you, you, you look at a lot of people who have been appointed by presidents, and you're going to have people pro and con. Dr. Ben Carson is a neurosurgeon. Um, so what do you know about urban housing? You know, I don't know okay, what he so knows or doesn't know okay. about housing and urban development. I guess we will see. Um, and, you know, my job is just to let you know who's been appointed, who's being looked at, who's going to do the job, what they're actually doing when they do start doing the job. So, so we'll see. We will see. Um, have, have you ever been around an election of a president that's been so, with so much controversy? No. I don't think any of us have seen anything like this in our lifetime. I think if we talk to a lot of our parents, I don't think that they can say they've seen anything quite like this. Um, we've seen elections that are divisive, that are polarizing, right? But this is a situation where we've seen so much more emotion, I think, on all sides than we've seen in the past. People asking a lot of questions. And, and what's the good thing? The good thing is that people who are younger and younger, and I'm sure probably a, a lot of you guys have seen it like I've seen it, are interested, right, yeah. or have been galvanized, want to get involved in the process. And that's always a good thing. Yeah, that was my next question. What do you think are some of the positive things that have come from this this term, hopefully, of Donald Trump? I think we're, I think everybody's paying attention. And you would hope that if anything comes from any situation, however you feel about it, that if it gets people to pay attention, be involved, and, and make sure they understand what's going on, then that's always going to be a good thing. Absolutely, it's to sit down. It's your main man, M. Easy. Darlene Rodriguez is in the building. Um, I feel like I'm just harping on this whole Trump thing. So let me talk about what you've got going on. What's what's new in your world? How's the family? How, how's oh. Darlene? Oh, you're very sweet to ask. No, family's good. Family's got to have teenagers now. And, um, you know, they, they do what teenagers do, right? I feel like, you know, their job is to try to well, kill me. Well, you don't have any gray <laughs> hairs yet, so they're not doing their job. No, what are you talking about? I'm dying my hair every 48 <laughs> hours. Of course I have gray hair. <laughs> Darlene Rodriguez in the building. It's the Sunday sit down. Um, give me some some stories around around New York that I think have galvanized you, that made you feel a certain way, some pride in the past year or whatever. The past year. Hmm. Well, I look at. I mean, I think I look at how people have. You know, we report a lot of people being divisive and 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 fighting and and having conflict with each other. It's always nice when we can report stories where people have tried to help each other mm -hmm. and done good things. And it's always going to be that those those community stories where you have people who don't have much working together to maybe put out programs and, and bring people in who can benefit from them. So, you know, just generally speaking, there's a lot of that. Um, I mean, we saw a, a funeral of a police officer yesterday or this week who was shot many many years ago and forgave the person who shot him that's insane i mean forgave the person insane, who shot him right away and nice. you know what and and the person um who who was responsible for that shooting um did call that family many years ago and want to make amends and and he didn't get to he was released from prison and, and died within days of being released However, the I think the lesson for us as New Yorkers is that you can have conflict, you can forgive, you can move forward, try to do good things. Um, yes, I, I, you you said something about before about people searching and looking for people that that they should be able to trust and listen to. I feel like sometimes in that aspect, when there's so many choices, mm -hmm. you're only gonna follow the people that 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 agree with your mm -hmm. point of view, and I don't right. think that's always 
the right thing because you're now stuck in a chamber where you're just listening to everyone's opinions that are like-minded like yours. So how do we change change the, the culture to have it a situation where those people could feel comfortable to have their conversations with everyone? Because if, if the conversation doesn't happen, how do you ever fix a conflict? Right. It, I mean, it starts with respect, right? Mutual respect. Um, I drive home... And every day on my way to work and on my way home, I'm listening to all radio stations, include obviously <laughs> right here, absolutely, of course, and but I'm listening to a lot of news as well. So you know, if you're listening and, and you turn on every single radio station or news outlet, get every, give everything a little bit of time, go online and read the reputable. Uh, news outlet mm -hmm. websites and and read the stories you have to know what the other side is saying if you don't know then you sit in a place of ignorance absolutely you must understand that other point of view because you may learn from it you may understand why they feel the way they feel whatever it may be i mean knowledge is important it, it's always kind of driven me crazy when people say i don't watch the news i don't like negative news that drives me nuts because you need to know. You need to be informed. Mm -hmm. You can choose what you want to watch. Now, as far I'm glad you said that about news. Well, I I do watch Darlene in the morning well, like, before you. I get up and do the Breakfast Club thing. Um, <laughs> but I, I like to watch Vice News. Mm -hmm. How has Vice News kind of affected what NBC and ABC and those news uh, corporations do? Well, there's a lot of, yeah, there's, there's a lot of uh, different ways of presenting news and presenting stories, and it's not always the traditional, right? You like that sort of out there mm -hmm. camera in the field, type in the stuff, field. Yeah. And, and I think that's great, and, and I've watched it too, you know? So I think that it, it, you, you can find what appeals to you. I think, though, you, do gen you generally should always pay attention to the more reputable news outlets, whatever you think that is. Just pay attention. But, I mean, I love that new way of telling news. And even with us, with NBC, we have a lot of reporters who are out in the field, who are doing a lot of things, who have that backpack. And they can get out there, go into any war zone, any mm -hmm. foreign country, and he or she is alone, and they got their camera, and they're reporting, and they're editing, and they're giving that all to you from a very first-person perspective. It's fascinating. I'm a, I'm a big fan of Vice News. I watch Vice News weekly. I've even tuned into their the the channel Viceland. It's I think it's dope. Mm -hmm. uh, I suggest not to not listen to all news, but like you said, search for the news that's search. really showing you, you what's going on. Absolutely, it's your responsibility. It is. I mean, I think it's your responsibility as an informed New Yorker, as an informed citizen, to look for information. Now you seem healthy. Do I? I Are know. you eating greens? I don't know if I eat greens. I know I'm not sleeping. <laughs> I sleep about my show starts at 4.30 a.m., so I don't sleep very much. No, because my, uh, my next question was about the whole wave of eating green and healthy and juicing. Uh, have you hit on that wave yet? I don't juice. No. <laughs> I want to be very honest. I respect it. I love when, you know, people can tell me they've lost weight, they feel healthy, they feel energized. I need to chew food. I can't. Darlene, food. yes! I can't. I mean, yes! But respect to those uh, Yeah, who listen, do. Dave. To, to <laughs> each his own, but I can't juice. I need some no, food in my system. No, no. Mm -mm. Thank you, Darlene. I appreciate you for coming by. Thank you so much. It was amazing. Thank you. You going to um, tune in? 4.30 to 7 a.m. Today I get, in New York, Monday I get, Friday? I get here at 4.30. <laughs> So when I leave at 4 o'clock, you're the first thing I, leave, I get to see before I leave my door. I appreciate it. Darlene Rodriguez, NBC. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Just nice sit to down. see you. Shout out M Easy and tune in to the sit down. Boy, you should have known by now. Easy does, easy does, easy does. Power 105.1.